and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a slew of awesome Avengers Endgame figures. These figures have only just been announced, and I can't wait to show them all off to you right now. Starting things off, we're going to be taking a look at the smallest of the Avengers, the Avengers Endgame Ant-Man figure. As you can see from the packaging, we've got a really nice piece of artwork of Ant-Man from the Avengers Endgame movie. The back of the packaging gives you a larger character image of Ant-Man as well as the other figures in the assortment, all of which we'll be taking a look at in this video. Scott Lang brings big power to the fight as the half-inch hero Ant-Man. And the front of the packaging gives us this really awesome display of both the figure and his accessories. Taking a look at accessories first, as you can see, this particular Ant-Man figure comes with this extremely awesome looking mass shifting piece. We've got Ant-Man going through all the different various stages it takes in order for him to minimize. The detail on this has been really nicely done and the majority of it is cast in this really nice red transparent plastic. As you can see, we can make out details of Ant-Man's head and the final version of himself has been picked out in this really nice silver and black paint application. This particular piece has been designed so that it can actually stand up on itself and it looks really awesome as a display piece. Taking a look at the Ant-Man figure himself first off we'll start off with the details as you can see this head sculpt has been recreated fantastically and it really does look like the helmet that we will see in avengers endgame all the details have been picked out precisely and the paint applications further help in order to excel some of the smaller details i specifically really like the red paint application i've used for the eyes and these red stripes have been precisely painted as well moving down to the quantum suit as you can see it has also been detailed impeccably well we have got the avengers logo on the upper left side of his chest and I really do like this kind of angular design to these kind of quantum realm suits. They do look really awesome. All the paint applications have been applied exceptionally well and there are no paint bleeds that I can see on this particular figure. One awesome thing to note is that Hasbro have actually painted the quantum realm device that we see featured on all of these quantum realm figures and it looks really cool. Moving down to the legs of the figure, these two have also been painted exceptionally well. It appears that the legs have been cast in a gray like plastic and the upper thigh sections have been picked out in a really nice black paint. It really does help to break up the sculpt and makes the suit really stand out and look awesome. In terms of articulation on this figure, he's actually really poseable. The head is on a ball joint, so it can look left and right, as well as up and down, as well as tilt side to side. The arms can rotate the full 360 degrees, as well as bend out to the sides just like so. There is a 360 degree rotation joint at the elbow, and the elbows are able to bend at 90 degrees. The leg is able to kick forwards that far, however it can't bend back very far, and there is no knee articulation. For a quick Ant-Man endgame size comparison, here the figure is compared next to the Marvel Legends version. Upon first comparison, you would really think that these figures are identical. The only real difference is, is that the colouring on the Marvel Legends version is slightly brighter, he is ever so slightly taller, and the articulation is much improved over this particular version. However, nevertheless, I really do like this particular accessory that this figure comes with, and I really do think for the price that this figure is absolutely fantastic. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the Avengers Endgame Shatari figure. As you can see, we do have that awesome window display packaging which showcases the figure fully with his accessories. We have a really cool piece of artwork for the Shatari that we see in the movie. The back of the packaging gives us a larger image of the character as well as some of the other figures in the web, as well as a brief bio. The Shatari invade Earth under the command of the evil Thanos. So let's crack this bad boy and see what he is actually like. And here we have the Shatari figure opened up and out of its packaging and it looks awesome. The one accessory that this particular figure includes is this kind of staff slash gun weapon that we see the Shatari wield in the original 2012 Avengers movie. There is some really nice detailing. I particularly like this kind of purple paint that they've used in order to pick out the nozzle section of the gun. And to me, it kind of looks as if though it is some kind of shotgun. It looks really, really well done and does resemble what we see in the movie. My only criticism would be is that the Shatari figure cannot actually hold the gun exceptionally well. It does just tend to fall out of his hand so I tend to just rest it beside him to make it look like he's ready for battle. Taking a look at details, as you can see here, we have the masked Shatari figure. They haven't chosen to go with the unmasked version that we saw as the character art on the packaging, but nevertheless, I really do like the design of the helmet and the black paint applications definitely help out in order to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. I really do like this kind of gold-like paint that they've used throughout the figure. It really does make his armor look really alien-esque and it does look really cool. I also like how the gold paint kind of contrasts against the grey skin tone. It really helps to make it stand out and differentiate what is actually armour and what is just the Shatari's evil skin colour. On the back, we also have some really nice paint application. I like how this armour section has got some awesome riveting detailing. And even this black armour section here has also got some nice detailing as well. Moving down to the torso section of the figure, as you can see, we've got this purple paint application in order to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. And the hands have been detailed and sculpted incredibly well. They look really alien and very creepy and menacing. 
So that is definitely what I expect from the characters of the Shatari. Turning down to the feet section, as you can see, we've got this black molded in plastic, which has been molded in a way in order to replicate their armor. And the shin sections of the figure have been picked out in that same gold paint application that we saw on the upper torso of the figure, exposing the evil Shatari's toes. And upon turning to the back of the figure, this gold paint application also continues. Turning to articulation on this figure, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look left and right as well as up and down. It can also tilt side to side. Arms are able to rotate the full 360 degrees as well as hinge out to the sides. There is also a 360 degree rotation joint just above the elbow and the elbows are able to bend at a 90 degree angle. The legs can kick forwards that far and can kick back that far. However, there is no knee articulation whatsoever. So overall, this Shatari figure is awesome. It looks really awesome to what we see in the original 2012 Avengers movie. And who knows whether we'll see these evil bad guys popping up in Avengers Endgame in order to assist Thanos' battle against the Avengers. The next figure we'll be taking a look at is the Avengers Endgame Iron Spider. Now, as you can see from the packaging, we have that really awesome transparent clear plastic, which is, gives us a great view of the Iron Spidey with its extra spider arms. It states that this is inspired by Avengers Infinity War, as unfortunately Spider-Man was one of those characters that faced the wrath of Thanos' snap in Avengers Infinity War. We have a really awesome image of the Iron Spider. The back of the packaging gives us a larger character image of the Iron Spider, showcasing some of the other figures in the assortment. And his bio reads, Peter Parker gears up in an advanced suit made for him by Tony Stark. The Iron Spider suit is actually one of my favorite suit designs for, of Spider-Man, so I'll no doubt really like this figure. Straight out of the packaging, the additional Iron Spider arms do come detached from the main section. They're really easy to plug in. As you can see, we have this kind of clamp section that just plugs into these slots into the Iron Spider's backpack. Taking a quick look at these additional Iron Spider arms, they look really awesome and are definitely what differentiate this particular suit from other Spider-Man suits. The details have been executed exceptionally well. I like all these different ridges that they have placed throughout the Iron Spider arms. Unfortunately, they are not articulated. They are only articulated at one point. So you can really only get the arms going back this far and then forwards this far in order to help Spider-Man aid his quest against destroying the evil children of Thanos. On the back section of the Iron Spider arms, we have some really nice looking details. And to me, it kind of looks as if though this is the Spider-Man symbol. In order to attach these additional Spider-Man arms, you simply take the plug on the back of the Iron Spider and plug this particular port into it, completing the Iron Spider design. Taking a look at the actual Iron Spider himself, as you can see, his eyes have been painted impeccably well. And I really do like how the white kind of differentiates itself from the black outer section. I really also like like the kind of sculpted in web design that they've done to the mask of the Spider-Man. It really does look very authentic to what we see in the movie. Turning down to the torso section, I particularly like how this kind of spider symbol here goes off all throughout the torso section and the paint applications have been applied exceptionally well. I really do like how this darker blue kind of contrasts the lighter gold as well as the darker color of the red. Turning to the arm sections of the figure, these two have also been painted and detailed exceptionally well. I particularly like this kind of spider pose that's gone for the particular hand. And as you can see here, we've got the device where Spider-Man shoots out. He's iconic webs. This particular hand is sculpted in a way which looks as if though it should hold an accessory. However, the only accessory that this particular figure comes with is his additional iron spider arms. Moving down to the legs of the figure, these two have been detailed really nicely. I really do like this kind of pattern design that they've gone for the upper torso section and the detail looks really, really nice. I like how the blue contrasts the lower shin sections which have been cast in a majority red color and these gold paint applications are here to define the knees. Turning the figure around to the back now, that same detail continues and if you actually remove the additional iron spider arms, you can also make out a second spider symbol, which has also been painted really nice. Turning to articulation on the figure, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look left and right as well as up and down. It can also tilt side to the side. The arms can rotate the full 360 degrees as well as hinge out to the sides that far. There is also a 360 degree rotation at the upper elbow section and the elbows are able to bend at 90 degrees. The legs are able to kick forwards that far. However, they cannot kick back that far. And similarly to the other figures, he does not have no knee articulation. Now turning to some additional ways that you can pose the additional iron spider arms when implemented onto the figure. As I stated, they can only move forward and backwards. Your only real display options for these particular arms is to have them splayed all the way back or to have them crunch all the way forwards in order to make it look as if though the arms are protecting Spider-Man. Overall, this Iron Spider figure is great. The detail on this particular figure is fantastic for the price point and he is definitely my favorite out of the wave so far. The next figure we'll be taking a look at is the King of Wakanda himself, 
Black Panther. As with all these figures, we have a really nice window display package which displays Black Panther himself, as well as his kind of Wakandan-like weapon, which seems to have some kind of vibranium effect at the top. It also states that it is inspired by the Black Panther movie, and notice how all of the characters that got dusted in Infinity War all include this inspired sticker. Hasbro really aren't giving anything away from this particular movie, and I think that is great. We also have a really awesome but very creepy looking at Black Panther with his eyes exposed from beneath his mask. Turning to the back of the packaging, we have a larger character image of Black Panther as well as some of the other figures in the assortment, and he also comes with a brief bio. T'Challa, the king of Wakanda, protects his homeland and the world from threats. I was a massive fan of the Black Panther movie when it first came out, so I'll no doubt really like this figure. And here we have Black Panther, aka T'Challa, out of his packaging. And I've got to say straight away that the Iron Spider definitely has a competitor here in being my favourite out of this entire way. Taking a look at accessories first, Black Panther does come with this awesome looking Wakandan stick. I really do like this black section, it's been picked out in a really nice glossy black paint. And these tip sections have been picked out in a transparent clear purple plastic, which to me looks as if though they are vibranium inspired weapons. In order to implement this particular weapon on the Black Panther figure, he does come with one hand which is actually opened enough in order for you to actually snap the spear in so that Black Panther is ready to do battle against Thanos and his evil army. Taking a look at details first, this figure is absolutely covered with sculpted in detailing and it is really authentic to the movie. The helmet section has been sculpted in a way which looks exceptionally accurate to the movie. I really do like the silver paint that they've applied to the eyes in order to define it from the rest of the sculpt. And I really do like how some sections of the helmet are this kind of smooth type of armor, where other sections are this rigid, more detailed surface. It really does create for a very eye-catching piece. Turning the figure to the back now, as you can see, we've also got some fantastic sculpting in armor. There isn't much in terms of paint on this particular figure as the Black Panther suit is majority black in its color. However, where there is paint application, it has been applied exceptionally well. I really do like how they've kind of painted all of this spike section around his neck in this really awesome some silver paint and there are no paint bleeds whatsoever so it really does look great against the black skull. So moving down to the arms as you can see they have done some muscle definition here. This definitely does make Black Panther an opponent to be reckoned with and I really do like the silver paint that applied to the wrist sections. The claws have also been sculpted exceptionally well. This particular hand is obviously to grasp the spear whereas this one is more of a hand-to-hand -hand type of pose which we would probably see Black Panther fighting opponents with. Moving down to the leg sections the details do get slightly smoother here however there is still that really nice rigid detail to the sculpt and finally there are some silver spikes to the base of his feet. Turning to articulation on Black Panther, it is the same as all of the other figures. The head is on a ball joint, so it can lift up and down, as well as left to right. It can also tilt side to side ever so slightly. The arms can rotate the full 360 degrees, as well as hinge out to the side. The forearm section can also rotate the 360 degrees, and there is a 90 degree bend at the elbow. The legs themselves can kick forwards that far, and only back that far, which is a considerable amount when compared to the other figures. And once again, there is no knee nor foot articulation. So overall, I think that this is yet again another fantastic release by Hasbro. The details on this particular figure are absolutely fantastic. And despite having some limitations in the legs, you can definitely get some really awesome poses, especially with his Wakandan Spike weapon. Now the final figure we're going to be taking a look at of this 5 slash 6 inch range is of course the first Avenger himself, Captain America. As you can see from the packaging, we have that awesome window display section which fully showcases the figure as well as his accessories. We've got a fantastic piece of character art for Captain America. It states that he's from the Avengers movie. Turning to the back of the packaging, we have a larger image of Captain America with the other figures that are available in the assortment. It also gives us a brief bio. The first Avenger Steve Rogers stands ready when the world needs him. As Captain America is essentially the leader of the Avengers, this is no doubt one of the most anticipated figures out of this second wave of Avenger figures. And here we have Steve Rogers, aka Captain America, aka the first Avenger, out of his packaging. And as always, we'll start off with accessories first. Captain America does come with one accessory, that being his awesome vibranium shield that we've seen him wield in all of the movies other than Infinity War. As you can see, it is cast in this awesome red metallic-like plastic, and the silver star section has been painted exceptionally well. I like this kind of blue border that they've put around it as well, and I really do like the silver trim that they've put in the center of the shield in order to break up the skull. Turning the shield to the back now, further to my surprise, I'm actually extremely surprised that they've actually molded and sculpted in some handles and straps for this particular piece. 
considering this is a basic figure. I really wasn't expecting this, and I really do like the color of plastic that they've chosen to go with. It's this kind of worn out brown leathery type of plastic, which makes it look really detailed and very authentic to the movie. And once again, we've got some nice sculpting and detailing of buckles and poles. In order to give Captain America his iconic shield, you're going to want to take the larger hoop section and plug that through the arm first, and then he'll actually grip on to the lower handle section, just like so. And due to the articulation of the figure, you can actually get Captain America wielding his shield in a very iconic pose. Now turning to the Captain America figure himself, first off we'll start with details. As you can see from the head sculpt, this is no doubt the Captain America that we've all come to know and love. However, I definitely cannot see no resemblance whatsoever to Chris Evans. This is obviously due to the fact that this is a basic figure, so a figure with a more higher price point, such as the Marvel Legends version, is sure to do a better job at the likeness. Nevertheless, the paint applications, particularly on the mouth section, have been applied exceptionally well. However, I will say that the eyes on this particular figure do look definitely slightly wonky. However, the A symbol on the top of the helmet has been painted and sculpted really well. For a quick side profile, as you can see, the ears too have been painted and the strap section underneath Captain America's helmet has been picked out in this kind of brown paint in order to replicate the strap. Turning to the back of the figure, the fabric on the back has been sculpted in a way to make it look extremely wrinkled and very authentic to the movie. And I really do like the brown straps that they've painted on the back of the figure. Turning to the front of the figure now, there is also some really nice detailing and nice paintwork. The silver star has been painted exceptionally well. And I really do like how this kind of larger star sits from the outer side in order to make the middle one look more defined. And there are no paint bleeds on this particular section where you would expect them to be. Turning to the arms of the figure, once again, there is also some really nice detailing as well as a really nice red paint application in order to break up the blue skull. The hands have been sculpted and painted in a way in order to make them look extremely defined. This particular hand is obviously to wield Captain America's shield as well as some other additional accessories that you may wish to place into the figure's hand. And this particular hand is sculpted in a fist pose so that Captain America can face his threats head on. Turning to the lower section of the figure, once again, I really do like this material effect that they've implemented into the thighs of the figure. And you could also make out some details such as some pockets which have been fulfilled. Turning to the boots, they have been painted in the same kind of burgundy type of brown paint that we saw on the gloves and on the straps. And these two have been detailed exceptionally well. I really do like the different buckles and braces that they've applied to them in order to make them look very authentic to the movie. Turning to our articulation on Captain America, much like all of the figures, he follows the same formula. The head is on a ball joint, so it can look left and right as well as up and down ever so slightly. However, it cannot tilt side to side very well due to the obstruction of the helmet. The arms can rotate the full 360 degrees as well as hinge out to the sides. There is also a 360 degree rotation just above the elbow and the elbows can bend at 90 degrees. The legs are able to kick forwards that far as well as back that far. However, once again, there is no knee nor lower foot articulation. So overall for articulation it is once again very basic, but what you'd come to expect from these basic figures. So there you have it. That is my review on the entire Avengers Endgame Wave 2 basic figures. If I was to rank this wave, I would definitely say that the Iron Spider is my favourite, closely followed by Black Panther, then of course Captain America, then Ant-Man, and then finally the Shatari. Despite being done with the second wave of the basic figures from the Avengers Endgame movie, we've still got to take a look at the second wave of Titan Hero series. Now, Star-Lord is a part of this wave, however, I chose not to pick him up due to the simple fact that he was released along with the Infinity War line. First off, we're going to be taking a look at Rocket Raccoon and then we'll take a look at Marvel's Valkyrie. Starting off with Rocket Raccoon, as you can see, we've got the Avengers Endgame logo. We've got a really cool character image of Rocket Raccoon there. It states that it's from the Titan Hero series. The side of the packaging showcases some of the additional pieces that you can get in order to make the figure speak. Unfortunately, I can't get a hold of these in the UK, so I will just be reviewing the base figure. However, if you do pick up these packs, I think Iron Man and Captain America are a part of them, you can plug them onto the figure in order to make them speak. The back of the packaging showcases the other figures in the assortment, as well as a character image of Rocket Raccoon, as well as a brief box. Bio. Rocket Raccoon is a technological genius ready to save the galaxy again. Now upon taking Rocket Raccoon out of the packaging there is some slight assembly required and that is the sense that you actually have to plug his tail into the back of him. It's very easily to assemble and the tail is articulated so it can move forwards and backwards. In terms of accessories that this particular figure comes with, of course it comes with a massive gun, this being Rocket Raccoon, of course it's going to be loaded up with one of the biggest weapons in the galaxy. Taking a look at this particular weapon, as you can see it has been sculpted and detailed absolutely fantastically. This really is a very detailed looking piece to my surprise. There is so much mechanical detailing, particularly in this section. And I really like these kind of piston sections towards the barrel section of the gun. When you flip it over, is slightly hollow however that is due to plug in additional titan packs in order to make them say different sounds in order to insert the gun into the figure's hand this is the best i could get the gun is exceptionally large so it doesn't really hold into the trigger finger hand that well without balancing it 
and even if you do get it in there it does look really out of place and it will just tend to flop over so I tend to put the handle section in this hand and have this kind of barrel section resting on this hand. Now taking a look at the Rocket Raccoon figure himself he is actually really surprisingly detailed. Once again Hasbro have put some fantastic detailing into the figure's head. The paintwork as well as the sculpt looks really really precise and this attention to detail really wasn't what I was expecting from the Titan Hero series. I really think that the head sculpt on this particular figure is absolutely fantastic and this particular figure does look really well done as a display piece. Taking a look at his outfit, he does seem to be wearing this kind of quantum realm suit that we have seen the other Avengers sport in some of the trailers and TV spots. And it does look fairly faithful to what we see in the movie, as opposed to in the movie, the gray is actually replaced by a white coloring. However, this is probably due to some early concept art. Similarly to the Ant-Man figure that I just took a look at, this particular figure does have the quantum realm device on his wrist. However, it isn't painted up like we saw on the Ant-Man figure and has just a simple black coating. The sculpt work on the overall suit looks really well. As I stated, he does have this kind of carbon fiber type effect going through the suit and when you turn it around you can see his tail protruding from the back which is also sculpted and detailed really nice. Turning to the legs of the figure now as you can see we come to the thigh sections which are fully armoured up whereas the feet sections are, are bare and you can pick out some of the rocket raccoon toes. Turning to articulation on the figure, the figure has got a ball joint so it can look left and right as well as up and down. It can also tilt side to side however the ball joint is extremely stiff the arms can rotate the full 360 degrees as well as hinge out to the sides. There is no elbow nor wrist articulation joint and the legs are just able to kick forwards that far as well as back that far and the legs are able to do the splits. So overall, I think this Rocket Raccoon figure is absolutely fantastic. The details are really nicely done and although I can't figure out how to actually place the cannon into Rocket's hands, it does look really awesome when posed like this. However, nevertheless, we still have one more figure to go. So let's take a look at Marvel's Valkyrie. Taking a look at Marvel's Valkyrie in her back, as you can see, we've got a really awesome image of Valkyrie there. It states that she is from Avengers, and as this is the Avengers Endgame logo, it does lead me to believe that Valkyrie will in fact make an appearance in Endgame. It states that this is Marvel Valkyrie. It's from the Titans Hero line, and we have a window display displaying the top half of the figure. The side of the packaging has some cross promotion, with the back of the packaging having a larger character image, as well as some of the other figures in the assortment. It also states that a powerful warrior Valkyrie strikes down her enemies with her masterfully wielded sword. And here we have Valkyrie out of her packaging. Now as always, we'll take a look at accessories first and then we'll take a closer look at Valkyrie herself. Taking a look at accessories, Valkyrie does come with one and that is of course her signature shield that we see her wield in Thor Ragnarok and supposedly she will wield this once again in Avengers Endgame. I really do like this kind of turquoise blue that they've used for the blade, as well as the rigid in detailing that they've placed towards the base of the blade. And I really do like how the contrast of the blue and the white goes. It really does look awesome. In terms of Valkyrie actually wielding the sword, you do actually have to pry her fingers open as the grip is extremely tight. But once you have the sword in there, it's not going anywhere. And it really does fit very securely and makes her look really awesome with it. Now taking a look at details, here we have Valkyrie's head sculpt. Now personally, I don't necessarily think this is a great likeness to the actress who actually plays Valkyrie in the movie. However, it is never nevertheless a close enough representation and none of these titan hero figures tend to nail the likeness anyway however she does have some really nicely painted features such as her eyebrows and lips and i also think her eyes have been painted exceptionally well as well i really do like the sculpting and detailing that they've put in her hair it's, this section here isn't actually a separate piece this is one entire piece which i was extremely surprised to see as this section is slightly more pliable than the rest of the figure as you can see when you turn around to the black we do have this big quadruple section of hair and this once again has been detailed really nicely Turning now to her armor, as you can see the paint applications that have been used here are very tidily done and there are no paint bleeds whatsoever. I really do like the gold paint that they've used for this and I also like the sculpting and detailing of her suit. I really do like the white plastic that they've used, it definitely looks very accurate to what we see Valkyrie wield in Thor Ragnarok and whether or not she will actually wield this particular suit in Endgame is yet to be seen. But nevertheless, I do think it looks really nice and the figure is detailed all the way around. Turning down to the leg sections, once again, we have some really nice gold plated armor. And this particular gold paint is actually a lot shinier than the gold on the top. And it really does look very authentic to real life gold. Taking a look at some of the details on her shins and on her thighs, as you can see, we've once again, it's got some really nice armor plating and it has been picked out in some detailing with some nuts and bolts. Turning to articulation on Valkyrie, as this is from the Titan Hero series, the articulation is not as good as, as it would be if it was on Marvel Legends. So the head is on a ball joint so it can look left and right as well as up and down ever so slightly the arms can rotate however they cannot do the full 360 due to her arm pads the arms are able to move out to the sides there is no hinge at the elbow nor wrist articulation and finally the legs can kick forwards that far and then back about that far so there is really only motion kicking forwards with the legs so overall for articulation it is pretty basic so there you have it 
that is my review on some of the Wave 2 figures from the brand new Avengers Endgame movie. If you enjoyed this review, please let me know down in the comment section below. And until my next review, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.